Hello everyone, Hunter Bakes here, back to review for y'all. Everybody, today I'm here by review for AEW, doing another by watch show last night there. <laughs> Alright, give my thoughts for y'all there. Give you know, you know, different matches there, and the show has a whole stuff out there. So, you know, without further ado, let's go get right to everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, first match everybody, talk about the kickoff show match or the pre show matchup, um, which was team of Hook. And Dan Housen, Hookhausen, to get on the team of Tony Nice and Mark Sterling. Um, uh, <laughs> maybe there was not really much to this match up here. It was a yeah, more of a comedy based match up here, but but this job there. Uh, it was entertaining to watch there. I'm, uh, at the end, the uh, Hogan Dan Housen got the win there. After hooking the blade out, Mark Sterling. He had to tag in Dan Housen to get the pin, so. <laughs> so <laughs> and Hook and Dan Housen, they're very over the crowd here, so. <laughs> Don't know if this will be the only time we'll see them two up, we'll see the two up, two up there, so. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see if, if we'll see we'll see Hook and Dan Housen team up more there in AEW, so. All decent. It was a decent uh, payoff show match up there, so I think the right team won there, so yeah. There are the first official match for the short by kicked off with MGF versus Wardlow. Now, everybody my prediction of here, well, I did state that it was up in the air whether or not MGF was going to show up there as um there was a bit of controversy going into the show there where um MGF no showed um, the AW Fan Fest. And, and some people wonder if he was actually going to yeah, be a part of the show there or whatnot. Um, but MJF did have come out here, so. And, it is interesting that a little bit of play thing there, kind of mocked the reports of him, you know, taking a play there, because there were some people claiming that Jeff was. Try to get to get out of Las Vegas there, so uh, there were look out there. Everyone, everyone did. What well, there wasn't necessarily much action with this match up here, but did what did his job there. Yeah, Warlow and yeah, beat the snot out of MJF there. MJF did get a little bit off its tip, but not a whole lot, and he tried to use the direct, right, but he got caught. <laughs> and well, Warlow just <laughs> a blurry MJF there. Then you hit like 10 power bombs in total there. Hit him with five in a row there. He was going to pit up there, but then he stopped and then it hit five more MJF there. So. Everybody also and stimulation for the matchup there. You know, MJF abusive to Wardlow there. Wardlow was getting tired, you know, working with the MJF there. So led to him, you know, hand the raid over to see a pup there. Or you know, during Punk and MJF's dog collar match back at Revolution, MJF was not was MJF was not too happy with Wardlow there, and well, uh, Wardlow won a match to have fight for his freedom for MJF there. And that's what happened here. So <laughs> after hitting ten power balls, Wardlow got the pin and the win there. And MJF get carried out a stretcher here, so <laughs> it's a. So, let's say we won't be seeing MJF for a while, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> and after the matchup, to, after that matchup, Toy Javali announced that Wardlow was officially signed with AEW there, and the crowd cheered on Wardlow there. And it was a it was a nice moment to see there. I said well, overall, not really much going with the match itself there, but you know, in terms of action, but it accomplished what it needed to do there. Warlow very dominant there, and he got he got his freedom from JF. Now he's on his own, so I'm very curious to see what's gonna be happening with Warlow going forward there, and which and which championship he's gonna go after there. As for JF, it's um, I'm not too sure what's gonna be happening with him since there's been a lot of you know reports you know where he's got some heat with AEW there. Um, So he, so don't know nothing might be the last time we'll see MJF there. Don't know for sure, you know. 
But we're not going to be seeing MJF for a good while, everybody. So, yeah. Next, everybody, was the Young Bucks versus the Hardys. So, Everyone, everyone, as y'all know, the Young Bucks usually are more fast, uh, work pretty fast paced there. Um, but the Hardys there, you know, they're not necessarily the primary war there, you know. I'm... So they kept, the Bucks had to kind of been work a slower pace there. Of, uh, so, um, the Hardys in, I remember seeing the Hardys at the match with the Young Bucks back here, you know, for Ring of Order, you know. You know, for the uh, match of regular order there, the ladder match up there, so. But this match wasn't as good as those other matches, though. Um, maybe it was decent, but, you know. But I think we're a slow, working a slower pace there, you know. And we had to start, you know, the match up there. Did, did kind of fit the bits up there a bit. Uh, plus, there were a couple spots where Jeff. Cass was a little bit behind there, you know, on some stuff. Uh, and Jeff, he's been and Jeff, he's been doing some crazy stuff since coming to AEW in terms of you know crazy moves and dives and whatnot there. You know. But this, but this time around, you know, he he had some trouble executing there. So, but they did pick up as the match progressed there. At the end, the Hardys did eventually get the win after hitting the Twist of Fates one talk combo there. Taking the win. So, everyone, overall, it was a decent match there, but it wasn't as good as. If I compared it to the last time I seen the Hardys and the Unbucks face each other there, uh, it wasn't as good as the. It was not as good as the. As their last encounters there, so yeah. As everybody was Jade Cargill defended the TBS Championship against NJ. The first future match of the night there, but um, it was a decent match there, but uh, there were there seemed to be a little bit of miscommunication there with NJ and um Jay Cargill in terms of execute uh, in terms of timing the moves there and whatnot as it did there were a couple of times where the where the ladies ended up stopping there, you know. And there was a bit of delay on their moves, you know, and their moves to the short and whatnot there, but and it was a and they have a bit slow pace like similar to the match with with uh with the Hardys and the young bucks there. Um but it did pick up as progressed there, but And for a match that didn't necessarily get a lot of build up to it there, I thought yeah, I thought they did a decent job there. Um the early in the match up there, the interference comes in, uh, different people can hear Kevin interfere and uh NJ took care of Kira Hogan and Red Velvet, who've been allied with Jake Cargo recently there. Mark and Mark Sterling came out, tried to give Jade assistance there with the with the crutch there, but it backfired and Jay used it there for near full. Then, John Silver came out, took care of uh, Mark Sterling there with a brain buster. <laughs> and the end there, um for Debbie Manager Alka Bivens. I always I know he's going by a different name now, but I I can't remember what it is on top of top of my head here, but I'm just gonna address about Alka Bivens here. Alka Bivens came out there get provided distraction for Jake Targill there. She finished off and Jay off with Jay for the top rope there to get the win and retain the and retain the championship there. And as it looked like Jade and her squad were about to attack 
We're about to beat down and Jay Chris Antler came out there and scored that we have to see the debut for Athena for the Doyle's ever booed for the for those of you who remember back in the day. We and we have best straight out there, the Jade and her baggies backed out there. So heh. So heh. So we saw a couple different debuts they did match up there in the aftermath of the match. A pretty pretty cool to see there. <laughs> Um, Malcolm Bivens, he was he was a great manager for the Diamond Mine there. Um, um and he cuts great pros there. So I'm looking forward to see what what, he's, what he'll be doing at AEW. And Athena, like in four, always moved there. Always liked Athena there. Thought she was very underutilized at WWE. I'm very much looking forward to what she'll be doing at AEW. So it, it looks like there'll be sorry a potential feud with her and Jay Cargill there. I'd, I'd be I'd be cool, that'd be cool to see there. I, mean, I like I like to see you know a few between the two of them there yeah. <laughs> there my overall match itself was decent there yeah. But but I'm very I'm very interested to see what's gonna be happening afterwards here you know, in the aftermath of the match up here so yeah. Next everybody, we had the House of Black take on a House of Black team of Malachi Black. Like Matthews and Bray King take on a team, uh, the Death Triangle Pac. Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. A six man tag match up there. Everybody, this was definitely up there. It was probably one of those action packed matches of the night there. And. Definitely, definitely up there is one of my favorite matches for the show there. Everybody did a great job there. Although there was one kind of scary spot there where Brody King did a die the outside there, but he ended up hitting Party Ray Apron there. But he seemed to he seemed to turn out okay there. Didn't look like he suffered any major injuries or anything like that. Uh, okay. <laughs> but that was uh, the big guy like that fly there, you know. And nearly... <laughs> It just seemed like it was this off or something bad to happen to him there, but he basically do just he basically be okay there. So, uh, um, but in the end, um, okay, Black was fight off the dead triangle there after Buddy Matthews and I uh, brought King out taking out there. But he was getting worn out there, and it looked like Pac was got fish off with the black arrow. The white lights went out. Then Julia Hart came in. She had sprayed the black mist in front of Pac's eyes there. All okay, that black was able to turn things around and get the win for the House of Black there. So, so as long as we see the continuation of the Dead Triangle and House of Black, so. so overall, like I said, match was very action packed there. Definitely up there was one of my favorite matches of the night. And, and I was like, we finally got to see Julia Hart be part of the House of Black there. So, uh, curious to see what's going to be happening now that the House of Black's got another member in, in their ranks there. So, yeah. <laughs> Next, everybody, we had the finals for the men and women's portions of the Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. For the mid side, we had Samoa Joe versus Adam Cole. Everyone, this was definitely one of the matches I was looking forward to the most on the show here. Joe's Joe's been one of my favorite wrestlers, you know. For he's he's, a, he's definitely up there. He's been definitely been up there as one of my favorite wrestlers. Period. There, but I said my predictions video there followed him back when I first started watching Impact Wrestling back then. It called TNA. And Adam Cole, he's been one. Of, I consider him one of my recent favorites there. Sorry, check out more of his stuff not too long after his AXT debut there. Uh, check out his Ring of Honor stuff and other things there. Yeah. He's a great wrestler too, so I was expecting to have a really good match. Um, the match was pretty good there. I mean, it didn't get to like intense levels of, you know, excitement there, you know, but it's it was still a pretty solid match up between Joe and Adam Cole there.
There's a good back forward action between two of them there. But the ab the idea that ab troll did basically get the win there after some minor appearance from Bobby Fish. Came out to try to Joe a couple times there. Uh, first time didn't work so well. Take time. More successful there. Alcoma should wear out some more Joe and hit the boom to get the win. And to win the Owen Hart Foundation Cup. Uh Nation Torment. For the mid portion there. Yeah, I have a feeling there was going to be some interference to play there, but I'm a bit surprised it wasn't as much there, considering, you know, you know how, you know, Adam Cole is best there, usually a bit of interference from, you know, one of, one of his buddies there, you know, which we did get out and probably fish there, but usually more than that there. It's usually six call regular times there, sometimes the Bucks get involved. And I'm more surprised we didn't see really anything from Jay Lethal, Sonny Dutt, or Satnam Singh. Especially considering the oh, Joe's been tied in with a few with them there, but I did expect Adam Cole to get the win here, so I said, "Well, while I didn't get to the full expectations there, it was still a pretty solid matchup overall there." A good conclusion for the mids portion there. Thanks everybody. We had the finals for the women's for the women's tournament, women's portion. Everybody for the Owen Hart Foundation tournament. Everybody was with Britt Baker and Ruby Soho. And they had a really great matchup here. Great action between Britt Baker and Ruby Soho. Um, it, in terms of in-ring work there, this is definitely up there. It's one of the best matches for me there. However, um, however, yeah. With the story AEW was having, going to the matchup there with Ruby Soho, she had a promo. Now this, uh, Aside for a change there, she she's a little good fight for this really big moment there. It's something that, you know, she be determined to be, defeat Britt Baker there. I felt like she should have been the one to win the tournament, but instead we got Britt Baker win. Look, as, uh, look well, I like Britt Baker. She's up there as one of my favorite women's wrestlers for AEW. But I feel like, with, with all the respect, I felt like this was a little bit unnecessary for her to get the win. I mean, she already had a pretty solid run with the... With the Wiz Championship, with the Wiz World Championship, and I felt like Ruby so out of the two, between the two of them there. I felt like Ruby so could use this win more here. I, brought, I remember bringing my prediction video there. She has really, she's been doing decent AEW there, but she hasn't had that really big moment to AEW. If you know what I mean there, yeah. I felt like this would have been a good time to do it there, but it looks like AEW is gonna hold off for another time for Ruby so get her big moment. So. Uh, like I said, everyone, overall, the match was great there. Just, I feel like the wrong person won there. I feel like Soho could have benefited more for the win there. Um, but probably, probably should have seen it coming there. If Adam Cole get the win there, should have extended Britt to kind of get the win there, you know, since, you know, Adam and Britt are relationship there. You know, the power couple thing there, whatnot. Um, but anyways, everybody, after the after the matches are concluded there, Martha Hart Mar came out. Even nice speech there about the tournament there. Yeah. They already know Hart there, so like that. And she revealed the championship belts, which looked pretty nice there for the for the Oi Hart tournament there. And that was a yeah, it was a it was a nice moment to see there. So yeah, it was nice for AEW to have a tournament honor Owen Hart there. Um, yeah. Owen Hart, you know, what happened to him was tragic there. Yeah, you know, um, it he it's felt you know, it's fun. It's it's nice to have him have his 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 his, his contributions and what he what he did for wrestling business. You know, on have it honored there. And not just you know for what he did for wrestling there, but Owen Hart as a person in general there be honored there. I know we haven't really had anything since the fallout with Martha Hart and WWE there, the aftermath of Owen Hart's death. And the lawsuit so that there. But I'm glad that AW were able to do this here. I feel like a long time coming there, you know. And it's great to see it's great to have Owen Hart honored there. Yeah. 
Um, it was a great, it was a great first first tournament there. I'm looking forward to seeing more of the Owen Hart Foundation tournament there. So yeah. And everybody, next, next everybody is was the next multi-person matchup there with Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, the mid of the year, and Paige Van Zandt, who's was making her AW debut. And they were taking on Xavier Guevara, Frankie Kazarian, and Ty Conti in an intergender six-person tag team matchup here. With the stipulation that if Xavier Guevara and uh, the other team loses there, Xavier Guevara and Frankie Kazarian are not eligible to challenge for TT Championship again as long as Horace Sky has a title. Um, uh, everyone, everyone out of all the, I guess, matches that had long great stories there, um, this one was probably the one I was not, I didn't really have much interest in here. You know, um, Now, I thought they were doing decent at first there, but then they had, you know, uh, one double turn there with Zambi being the heel and Scorpio Sky being the heel. It would be in terms of face there after Zambi won back the TNT Championship from there. Then to have their ladder match up there, it was like, yeah. You know, and it was like they were going to go in the direction of Scorpio Sky being a baby face there. Um, but then the match with Frank Azari at the first TNT Championship there happened. And I was like, he's being the heel as well. <laughs> And well, it just kind of messed things up a bit in the storyline and whatnot there, you know. But mostly everyone in the storyline beat a heel there, you know, with only one kind of baby face in Frank and Zeri there. It was only two up with Zavi and Ty because they got a common enemy in the middle of the year and Paige Van Zandt. So, yeah. Now, with the match itself, it was all right there. I mean, it wasn't necessarily a bad match per se there, but... It is definitely one of the weaker matches in the show compared compared to the other matches I have in the show here. Um, uh, most of the guys in the wrestling there, although we did eventually get to see Ty Conti and Paige Van Zandt battle out there. And for Paige Van Zandt, for her in-break debut, I thought she did all right there. She didn't really do anything too crazy there, but I thought she did an all right job against Ty Conti there. Um, Um, but, but they either by you, but they just do get them folly out there with, you know, Frankie getting fed up with Zabi and Ty not taking the match too seriously there, the two of them making out. And they're all kind of a little bit of communication there at one point. Tagati is going to be actually it's super kicked by Zavi Gavar. Gavar gets to get out there. Scores Sky finishes off Frankie Zarian with the TKO to get the win. And so either Frankie Gazarian or Zavi Gavar are going to be eligible to challenge for the TT Championship there. As well as Scores Sky's champion. So. And. I'm I'm kind of glad the feud went down there. They kind of felt like they kind of dragged that story a little too long. This I felt like they dragged this feud out a little too long. And well, the the things uh, I felt like they were doing this ad, doing something to you that was a little bit unnecessary. So kind of glad to went there. And it looks like this is gonna be kind of a reset for the TZ Chip Trip there. As later on the night, um, D uh, Dante Martin ended up challenging Square Sky for the TZ Chip Trip match for. Dynamite this Wednesday, so and Sky accepted there, so and so looks like things are going back. So, so looks like things are going to be reset there for TD Chicha there. All that sports guys will be having a, a long ring with a the tile there, so yeah. That's everybody. Uh, one of the matches was kind of a last bit here Kyle O'Reilly versus Dr. Ray Allen. And these two had a pretty good matchup here. It, it was a, and they had pretty good chemistry. Work, they had pretty good chemistry there, you know. And there were definitely crazy moments in the matchup here, you know. And Kyle Riley played smart there, 
Calorie, the you know, a lot of the high risk moves that Dante that sorry, might or might mix up names here. Darby Allen was doing you know, trying to do there, but uh, and they definitely get did get brutal for Darby the matchup here as you know Kyle ended up yeah, making it bleed for the mouth them. I can't remember exactly what it made Darby bleed for the mouth there. He was choking him out with his necklace there. And he eventually kicked down Darby Allen there, fish him off with the knee drop on the top rope there to get the wind, so I know what, overall, my very you know, it wasn't too long a matchup, but it was a tense matchup here, and um, and Colorado got the win, so that's good for him. I'm curious to see what's gonna be happening here with him and Darby Allen after here. I will have it here tonight. Next start by we had the AW Women's World Championship matchup there with Thunder Rosa taking on Serena Deeb. Everyone, like I said, my um, British of what AW hasn't done a lot of uh, stuff, hasn't too much with build up, with, you know, with the build up for this matchup here. But I expect it to be a very good matchup here. Be one of the highlights for. But over there, I'm I'm glad that turned to be the case here because Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb they had a great wins matchup here. Right back to the fourth the action there. And the crowd were definitely very excited for this matchup here. <clears throat> but in the end, the Royals did eventually get the win there with the Fire Thunder Driver on Sri Deeb to retain the win championship. So overall, really great matchup here. I feel like the Royals always got a win there, but it was still a great match overall. Eh. I do kind of want to see her and thought it's really going to go ahead and get some type of feature there. So, yeah. Really great matchup, everybody. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Was probably the most chaotic matchup of the night there. <laughs> Just saying a lot. Concerned, you know, AW usually has a lot of crazy stuff happening to the shows there. It was the Jericho Appreciation Society taking on A. Kingston. Santana Ortiz, Brian Dalesit, and John Moxley in an Anarchy Arena match there. Which is pretty much a free for all there by yeah. You know, and they they got they got to go in right away there. <laughs> yeah, Jerry appreciate Society there. They have confronting the other team there, the crowd. They were fighting all over the place there. <laughs> And this and almost everybody was pretty much pre it got pre blade there a lot almost everyone ended up bleeding the matchup there had some blood of them there so <laughs> it definitely got pretty brutal there by <laughs> it's hard it's yeah it's hard to describe in words you know what everything that happened there but they were fighting over the place there you know. The backstage there, the crowd around the ring, air, ring and ring side area there, you know. The ring was getting torn apart there, <laughs> you know. It was an overall crazy match of everybody, but um, in the end, um, Brian Nelson almost got the win for his team by having the LaBelle lock locked in on Chris Jericho, but the A. Kingston came out with a container of gasoline. And he was all blade up there. <laughs> he still looked, it kind of looked like somebody, you know, out came from a brutal fight there or from either action or horror movie there. <laughs> He was getting gasoline ready to pour on Chris Jericho there since Jericho threw a fireball. A keeps his face there a couple of, a number of weeks back there. Um, but hey, but the gasoline guy, uh, da yeah, he actually got the gas some of the gasoline. Da Brian Dalesen there. Dalesen was not too happy about that there. Then Kingston and Dalesen were brawling. And then Moxley had to break it up there. The Hager and Jero took advantage of the miscommunication. And 
I've also got put through a tape through a table that had the barbed wire rack on it there. I uh, can't quite remember what it is, but the only way is there it's a wood point like, wood board, wood board with barbed wire on it there. So that's what boxing out the match up. Um keeps the alley out. And then Dale Sid, he got locked in with the walls of Jericho there, and he got like I that pre and Jake Hager was choking him out with the rope there and they also ended up passing out there. The Jericho Appreciation Society ended up winning the match. So, over right by, there's a pretty tight match up there. <laughs> um, a bit surprised to see the Jericho Appreciation Society get the win there, but, you know. But, but I am curious to see what's going to be happening with the few now that they got the win there, you know. And what's going to be happening with them with, you know, the, uh, the few they have with Keeks and Taylor Ortiz and the Blackpool Combat Club with, with Brian Ailsay and John Moxley there, so yeah. We just see what's going to be happening with them on Dynamite there, so yeah. Next everybody was the Tag Chicha match everybody. Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, the Finn Tiles against Team Taz, Ricky Starks, and Powerhouse Hobbs, and the team of Keith Lee and Sword of Strickland. And it was a really good matchup here by Pretty Extra Pack Fast Pace there. I also have a Hoss Collision there with Luchasaurus, Hobbs, and Keith Lee. One important matchup there, so. It was very extra packed there. Either team could come out top with the win there, but in the end, Jurassic Express did get the win after he, the Jurassic Express, uh, they got the same, they're, they're fish, that's how you fish it all the same as their team everybody, so they hit their fisher on, so we strictly get the win, they were taking the towels there. A great match up there. <laughs> And Jurassic Express, there, there, where he continues there. All props to T Taz and Keith Lee and Strickland there to put up a good effort there. It'd be nice to see these, I nice see these three teams clash again sometime in the future there. And finally, everybody, we had the main event the AJ World Championship, Ab Page, defend the title against CM Punk. And this is a very good match everybody. Got very intense between Punk and Page there. That crowd was split 50-50 there. Although the latter end there became a little bit more horrible who were there to kind of cheer for more there. As one wrestler was kind of more heelish than the other one there close to the end. But in the end there by um, Page trying to they got poked there, had him laid out, but the referee gets knocked out there. He went over to grab the AW Championship there and contemplated whether or not to use. Whether or not to use the title on CM Puck there. Um. But he decided not to use it there. Try to go for another buckshot lariat. The puck countered to a GTS. Hit it on that page. Referee for day consciousness there. And count the one, two, three. And see a puck. With his first world title in almost 10 years. <laughs> As a new AW world champion. So. <laughs> so everyone. Overall, a really good matchup, really good way to close out the show there. Although there were a couple of minor botches there. The probably most notable one there. See him pump, try to do, do the buckshot lariat, but didn't quite get the full mix of in there. So, <laughs> well, after that, there was a really good match between Punk and Page there. I'm very curious to see what's going to be happening to that Page. He's no longer a champ. He had a pretty decent run as champion there. But. But he definitely, I felt like he definitely was more, you know, excited, you know, was more excited to get for a chase for the championship there against Kate Omega there. He had a pretty decent rush champion, but, you know, he didn't become as hot with the fans there, you know, 
as he as times uh, with you know as his tolerating to there. So Punk came out on top there. Congratulations to see a Punk with his first world title in almost his first world title in almost ten years. So I'm very excited to see what AEW is going to be like with CM Punk as the world champion. So yeah. All right, well, that's all the mat that's there, all the matches that happened and the up as project that happened at AEW with another by overall by um it was a really good show for AEW although um I all I have stated in some of the other reviews for AEW there that you know it does feel like some of their shows do last a little too long there and this and this was another case out there I felt well you know there were a good number of different matches here you know you know there weren't necessarily there weren't necessarily bad matches of the show there. You know, we have no more great matches for AEW Double or nothing there. But I that, felt like that there could have been some matches that should have happened on like Dynamite Rampage there, not here for the or nothing there. But overall, Double or nothing was a very good show there. <laughs> Um, do we kick up the other way for AEW to, you know, get off their third year there as, you know, as they had, they had it for their first pay-per-view was Double or Nothing. You know, this was a good way to kick off, you know, their third year as, you know, do that, yeah, you know, good way to kick off their third year in the business there and whatnot, so yeah. I am looking forward to see what's going to be happening for the next AEW show, sure, one, so yeah. All right, I'm pretty sure up for the one. Next time by, I'll be doing a review for another series review by where I'll be reviewing um, the Total Drama spinoff, The Ridiculous Race. And a couple more videos out there before I am off from a family vacation there by. So, but tell everyone, for something else that I want, if you all saw here, make sure you like button, do channel, subscribe, bell for each channel, comments, episodes. I'll see you all next time. This is our Peace.